Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be excitedly glad in it. We're going to ask that you stand to your feet as we give God the glory. Sometimes we have to command our souls to bless the Lord.
you were not from a bad place. You can be green. See that seed is green? They're not from there. Behold, see that seed is still green. That means they're from the not green. The Lord is my teacher. The Lord is thy creator and thy rightful king. The sun shall not Thank you, dear God, because you brought me. Oh, dear God, bear me. Keep me, dear God. Make me strong. As I pray, Father, my heart is weak this morning, but I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to lift you up this morning, Father. Oh, God, help me to do your holy and righteous will. I ask your Heavenly Father to lift up my pastor this morning. And his wife. Not them only, dear God, but every man that stands and proclaims your word. He's touching the day, dear God. We all need you, Father. We can't do without you. I needed you to wake up this morning, wake me up this morning, and need me. I couldn't wake myself, Father. See, you have touched me. You have made me. And behold, my eyes were open. And I perceived and witnessed a brand new day. One that I have never seen, yet another I never see again. But God, I just want to thank you this morning. Thank you, dear God, for food on my table. Thank you for clothes to put on. Thank you for our mobile. And thank you, Father, for taking care of us on the dangerous highway. Not only me, dear God, but everyone under the sound of my weak voice this morning. I just thank you this morning. Lift us up and continue to, dear God. My Father, we need you. Some need us need you for one thing, some need you for something else, Father, but we all need you. And I just pray this morning, dear God, that you would just touch us and continue to grow us, dear God. New beginnings to as a whole, Father God, we are looking for you to guide and lead us under the leadership of my darling pastor, David. Father God, I just thank you this morning once again for my wife, dear God. Touch her body right now as she's laying. In pain right now, Father. You know the gift. You know, you know everything.
love on him and celebrate him today. He is an awesome God. Hallelujah. He is a mighty God. And we honor him today. It's good to be here with you all to share the word of God. I'm grateful that Pastor Davis has trusted me uh, in his absence to share with you the word of God. That means a lot. It means a lot. And so uh, I'm grateful to him and grateful to Sister Davis. Y'all just show us some love today. Show us some love. Amen. Two amazing people that lead here in this ministry. And to all of you today, I'm grateful to be here. I want to just honor my wife and my son who's here today as well. Amen. Thank you all for coming out today as well. And being here. Now we're we are going to get into the word today. Matthew, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 5. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if, you're, and if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you, as always, for uh, the opportunity to study, to hear your word, to read your word, to listen to your word. We thank you that as your word, as you have given us your word, it is a light, a, a, a light into our pathway and a lamp into our feet. Your word gives us light. Your word strengthens us and encourages us. But God, we just ask that you give us understanding of what you have to say today, not what I have to say, but what you have to say. Thank you for the revelation knowledge flowing freely on the internet uninterrupted by any satanic force. God, we thank you, Lord, that we will speak, and we will hear, and we will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, I want to talk to you today about a new spin on an old subject. A new spin on an old subject. Y'all know we live in a world full of spin. Washington, D.C. is considered spin city. And it's interesting how when something happens in our nation, there's always a spin that somebody is able to put on it. Even when we look in entertainment and we look at in the world of athletics and when we look at even in the church world, there's a spin that people are able to put on it. They are able to say how from their perspective things and here in our scripture today, Jesus is giving us a new spin on an old subject. And the subject is love. Love. Everybody say love. L-O-V-E. -E. Love. You remember that song back in the day, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. I remember Denzel watched a movie years ago. He said, what the world needs now is not it's all, that, that's all we see, right? In, in secular society, we see songs and, and, and movies and TV. It's about love. But you can't sing about love. You can't talk about love without talking about God. Because God is love. And he has given us two simple rules to live by. You know, in church, we, we have a lot of rules. What life we have a lot of rules. At school, I'm sure the kids are like, why do we got all these rules? What's up with all these rules? Life is full of rules. But 
God makes it simple for us. He makes it simple. In Matthew 22, he makes it real simple for us. He says, I've given you two rules to live by. Jesus said, love God. Two simple rules to live by. If you want to get it, you want to get things right in your life, love God, love people, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And he was at it with your strength, and then love your neighbor, and love yourself. So if you don't love yourself, how can you love others? And that's one of the problems we see. People don't understand who they are, who God has made them to be, and they don't love themselves, so they can't love others. Love God, love people. You cannot walk into your destiny without operating in God's love. I gotta say that again. You cannot walk into your destiny, your purpose, your calling in life without operating in God's love. We must love, first of all, we must love Him and love others the way we love ourselves. And there's no getting around these. There's no getting around these. Jesus taught that all of the law and the prophets. Everything we read about in the Old Testament hangs on these two. Loving God and loving people. That's it. That's what the law, and, and Paul talks about in Romans 13, verses 8 through 10. He says all the law can be summed up in this. We're talking about uh, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not uh, uh, bear false witness, you know, lying on the other. He said it comes down to this. Love. Love your neighbor. Now that's easier said than done, right? It's easier to say than, than, than done. But this is it. This is the essence of what God's message is all about. Loving him and loving people. If we commit ourselves to following these two rules, everything else will fall in place. He said, let everything hang on this. Now every, everyone has their own spin on what love is. But God who is love, he challenges us to go beyond our own understanding of what love is and calls us to a higher calling of love. Listen, faith is the greatest activating force. What do I mean by that? It's, it's the scripture tells us that, that faith, it teaches us that faith is the key to receiving God's blessings, right? It says that without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must first of all believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It tells us that we must walk by faith, right? Faith is the greatest activating force. In other words, it will activate the promises of God. Right. Make them happen in your life. But love is the greatest motivating force. It should be the reason why you do what you do. Faith is the greatest activating force. Love is the greatest motivating force. Love is the key. And God challenges us once again. He challenges us to go beyond our mere understanding of what love is, because we all have an understanding of what love is, and it's based partly on how others have treated us over the years. But God says, I want to push you even further. And that's what Jesus is teaching us here in Matthew chapter 5. <clears throat> he says, you have heard, again, you have heard it was said, that it was said, you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is Old Testament teaching, right? This is what the Old Testament taught. Love your neighbor. I mean, I'm sorry, this is not what the Old Testament, this is what the old, uh, this is what was teaching that had been based on the Old Testament. That you can love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is what people had begun to teach. The religious leaders even were beginning to teach this. But Jesus said, I'm going to put a spin on it. Because see, the Pharisees had their spin. The Pharisees said, love your neighbor.
not about how you feel. See, the Pharisees were scheming. They said, if you have the enemy, it's okay. So we're about to hate your enemy. Jesus said, no. I'm taking it a step further. I'm taking it a step further. I'm going to challenge you. See, God is not a respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of persons. And neither should we when it comes to showing love. You may be Democrat and you're Republican. You still gotta love them. Or vice versa, you may be Republican and they're Democrat. Still gotta love them. You may be Latino and they may be white. Still gotta love them. They may come from uh, a different neighborhood that you come from. You still gotta love them. I don't like them over there. It doesn't matter. You still have to. They may be in another church, a different denomination. Some kind of way we think people sometimes in a different denomination that, you know, they're in a, like we're in gangs or something. <laughs> God is not in respect to respect your person. And neither should we when it comes to showing love. And when I talk about this love, I'm talking about indiscriminate love. This is what agape is. Agape. In fact, he uses the word agape. This is the, the Greek word agape which means no strings attached, unconditional love. Yeah. This is the love that God has for us. You think about it. The love that God has for you, no strings attached. God loves you just the way you are. It's a beautiful thing about God. God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you enough to change you from the way you are. That's a beautiful thing about God. He loves you just the way you are, but he loves you enough to change you from the way you are because he knows there's more in you. But God loves you unconditionally. God loves you. In fact, he loves you. I heard somebody say so much that he will open the gates of hell and walk you, allow you to go there because he's not going to fight you on your choice. God loves you. Somebody say, God loves me. See, this, this is important. Some people feel like God is mad at them. Some people feel like God has something against them. But God loves you. We cannot blame God for what people have done to us. We cannot blame God for what people are doing in this world, God loves you. Say it one more time. God loves me. And he agape. No strings attached. Unconditional. In fact, the scripture tells us that his love is faithful. Lamentations 3. His love, it says the faithful love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. You know you wake up with a clean slate every morning. Is that not love? A clean slate. Somebody, now thank you, God. I needed that clean slate. I need to start this day over. God said, I'm going to give you fresh mercy every day. That's love. And of course, the ultimate show of love was in Jesus Christ. He's giving us Jesus Christ who gave his life for us. But God loves you guys. Not mad at you. God loves you unconditionally. And if we're going to reflect him as his children, have to have that same type of love. Yeah. And that's not easy, is it? It's not easy. It's not easy to agape people who have done you wrong. Look at what the scripture says. Let's go back to the scripture again. He says in verse 44, but I say to you, love your enemies. Agape them. Bless those who what? Curse you. Bless is the Greek word eulogios, which we get our English word eulogy from. You know what they do at, at, at funerals? When they speak in eulogy? We find good things to say to him. He had a smile. He, he always had a smile on his face. Didn't he? That's because he was getting on old people. You know it, and I know it too. We just don't want to say it at the funeral. We try to speak nice, right? I never forget it. My when my uncle's funeral. I, I always tell the story. Uh, one of my uncle's funerals. My uncle was a stern man. He was an old guy. You know, just kind of stern. And he never should, never, never like hugged us. You know, and, and told us he loved us, but he showed us things. And the fact that when my father passed away, he would show up. He was there at, at certain times I realized in my life, and, and I understood later on that he was showing love. But he, in, in, in one of his former pastors, uh, described him as cantankerous at his funeral. And it got to the point, you know, at the funeral, people getting up speaking nice things, but he was, a, he was a steward in the Methodist church. That's the deacon, you know, the equivalent of a deacon in the Baptist church. He was a steward, and, 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 and so people getting up and saying nice things about him. I remember my brother was sitting down in a row from me. He pointed at the at the funeral and said, this guy? 
Jesus says, when people are cursing you and they're speaking evil of you, talking about you, what do you do to them? He says, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Woo! This is hard stuff. Especially in our world that we live in today, the world of clapbacks. And I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you a piece of my mind. I'm going to get, you know, come back. You come at me, I'm going to come back at you. Jesus said, no, 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 no. Come on. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. I'll give you some homework to do. <laughs> I'll give you some homework, right? This is good, because y'all, okay, I, I have to admit, this is some work. This is some work. This, I, I, this is some work to love my enemies, to bless those who curse me, do good to those who hate me, pray for those who spitefully use me and persecute me, but yet, Here's the result. Here's what I'm showing, verse 45. That you may be sons, and I'll add daughters, of your father in heaven. In other words, you, you acting like your daddy. Yeah. Yeah. If you really a child of God, this is what you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this, this is what you're going to do right here. That you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good. He makes the sun rise on, on, on everybody. Any person that hates on you. God is still showing you. Still showing them grace, still blessing them. He says, For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. You do, you act the same way that the worldly people, tax collectors would look down in, in, in their society. Because they they would cheat the people, they would take advantage of people, they would 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 uh, uh, charge double prices to collect their taxes. And so they would look down. Jesus uses them to say, how different are you if you are loving those who love you back? And if you greet your brother, the people that greet you, the people that you like, the people that you talk to, he said, what do you do more than others? You're not any different than the worldly people. And so he uses here by saying, therefore, you shall be perfect. And the word perfect is the word mature. See, this is showing you a mature. This is showing your maturity right here. Now, it, you know, it, your, your maturity is not shown in how much scripture you can quote because anybody can memorize the Bible, right? It's not, it's not, not shown in how well you can pray and, 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 and sound when you're praying. Almighty God, Father, I just call upon you right now. I call upon, I summons heaven and earth. Your maturity is not shown in your worship. We we do all of these things, but 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 you understand what I'm saying? You know, you you looking like you're having a mystic moment, matrix moment. You just all into it. Jesus said, "Your maturity is shown in how well you're able to love those who won't love you back, who don't love you back." That shows your maturity. Therefore, you shall be mature, just as your father. Y'all follow me? So how do we do this? I call this the X1 factor. I call this the X1 factor. Let me read this in the Message Bible, verse 40, uh, 38. Here's another old saying that deserves a second look. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Is that going to get us anywhere? Here's what I propose. Don't hit back at all. Wow. If someone strikes you, stand there and take it. Now, there's a balance to that, right? You don't just let somebody beat on you. That's not what he's saying here. He's not saying just let somebody beat on you, take advantage of you. He says, it, it says, if someone drags you into court and sues for the shirt off your back, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. This is the message Bible. And if someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff. Live generously. That's the point of what he's saying. Don't go tit for tat. You come at me, I'm going to come back at you. No, at some point, somebody's got to be the bigger person and say, you know what? I I'm going to love you. I'm, I'm going to love you enough. In fact, I'm going to love you enough. I'm going to go over here. Because I see you, you're so 
still be on good terms. I don't agree with that. But I love you. I'm learning to love people that, that live different lifestyles than that. That maybe they might not be saved at all. But I'm, I'm learning to love people that don't necessarily agree with what, what I agree with. This is the way to love. Do not retaliate. Do more than what is required. That's what I call the excellent factor. Go on the extra mile. It's going beyond, above and beyond. And then you know what you're doing? You're sowing a seed. You're planting a seed. A seed that eventually is going to come back to you. The fruit is going to come back to you. The fruit of unconditional love, of showing others mercy. Just like you want mercy shown in your life, you show it to others. This is the way of God. This is the way of God. And, and Jesus says again, you are my children. This is how you know that, that you are a son, that you are a daughter of God. I call love the birthmark of the believer. How many of you have a birthmark? You got a birthmark somewhere, maybe on your leg or maybe on your arm. Some people have it, you know, other places. Some people, I had a classmate when I was growing up, he had one that was on his face. It was just visible. But a birthmark is unique. A birthmark says you are who you are. No one else has a birthmark. birthmark of the believer. It is an identification of the believer. Without the birthmark of love, other people really don't know who you are. And this is what determines, this is what sets us apart from other people when we love unconditionally like our Father. It's like a logo. A few years back, my son and I were going to a store. See, there was a Nike outlet store and we were, we were uh, looking at some clothes and seeing some things and he said, are these real Nikes? I said, uh, I said, yeah, son. I said, these are real. He said, they can't have a logo on these shoes if they weren't just real. They could be sued, a lawsuit, because they are putting somebody else's logo on their product. The logo identifies who you are. The logo says, this is Nike. This is Walmart. This is Mercedes Benz. Ford can't put Mercedes Benz logo on their car, their emblem on their car. Mercedes Benz can't put Ford's emblem on their car because it's unique. It is what identifies the product. And love is what identifies us. Love is what identifies us as believers, as children of God. Because it is love that motivates God to do what he did, he does. It is love that motivated God, even from the beginning, to have a plan of redemption in sending us his son, Jesus Christ. He knew from the beginning that we would be fallen, that this would be a broken world, but he had a plan of redemption from the beginning because he is love. And he had to find a way to bring us back to him. Love is what motivated him to send his son, Jesus, who came into this world and who gave his life and, and, and died on the cross for us, even though he had not sinned, even though he did not sin, he still took the punishment for us because he was motivated by love. And it was love that motivated him to give his life, and yet even after he rose from the dead, that he gave his spirit to say, I'm going to give you a part of me so that you can know how to live the way I want you to live. He gave the Holy Spirit for us so that he could guide us and lead us. That was love. See, God has demonstrated his love. And when we walk in love, we are reflected by daddy. That is why love is the birthmark. So may God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Remember that we are to love by choice and not by circumstance. Yes, love by choice and not by circumstance. Let's, 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 let's show love like never before. That's what the word really means, right? Really, the word really does mean love. It means to see the believer showing love. Somebody might say, well, I... Yeah, I got bills. My bills are due, and I don't know where the money comes from. I'm hard. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm down, and I'm feeling depressed. And, and, you know, what, what, is, what is this for me? Walk in love and watch God open up some things for you in your life. Oh, yeah. 
See, there's a blessing in obedience. God says, if you love me, you're going to be obedient. You're going to keep my commandments. You're going to follow what I say. And there's a blessing in obedience. So this is for all of us. We don't shy. We don't run and jump. We don't jump no, no, no tails off of this message. But this is what we have. This is what we need to do. Unconditional love. Walk in unconditional love by choice and not by circumstance. No things are possible. We can reflect the heart of the Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we just thank you for your word. Thank you, God, your word is going forth today. And it will not return void, but will accomplish what you sent it to accomplish. And will prosper in that which you sent it to prosper in. God, we thank you that you have loved us unconditionally. And you have given us your love. You put your love in our hearts so that we can love the way you want us to love. Help us to love. Teach us how to love. Teach us how to love unconditionally. No strings attached. God, we thank you, Lord, that you love us and we will reflect your heart of love. And in the process, God, that everything will be met, every need will be met in our lives. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the overflow. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do through us in the name of love. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, if you're here today, or maybe you're watching online, you've never ever committed your life to Jesus Christ. That is the first and foremost thing that you need to do. That is the, the best and the biggest decision that you could ever make is to make Jesus Christ the Savior of your life. Listen, it's a fact that a man named Jesus walked the face of the earth. Nobody disputes that. Even people in other religions acknowledge that Jesus was a real person. So how far off is it that he is the son of God? That he is God in the flesh. That he came to be the bridge, the go-between, between man and God to bring us together. As I said earlier, God loved us enough to have a plan of redemption. To have a way to bring us back. Even though we had fallen, even though we had messed up, he had a plan to bring us back to him. And his plan is Jesus Christ. And so if you're here today and you never ever knowingly confess him, meaning you never ever pray to receive him to be savior of your life. I want to give you the opportunity to do that today. I want you to pray this prayer. Everyone pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you have raised Jesus from the dead and he lives in my life. Save me. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to know that you are a son or daughter of God. You are a child of God. You are saved, a believer. You may not have had no lightning bolt strike you from the sky, no warm fuzzy feeling, the words quake. But you need to know by faith that you are saved. Just like you have a brain in your head, somebody told you you had a brain in your head and you believe them. Even though you never cut your head open to look inside and see, you need to know that you have heaven. You are a part of God's family. Amen? amen? Through Jesus Christ, you are a child of God. Three things, amen. Three things that will help you real quick. Three things that will help you to grow and be who God has called you to be. First of all, make a habit of reading the Bible, the Word of God, B I B L E, basic instructions before leaving the earth. That's what the Bible is. It is a roadmap, a guide that will lead help you to understand God more and his purpose for your life. Spend time every day, five to ten minutes at least, reading through the word of God. The church is going through a reading plan right now, but it's, it's helping us as we read the word of God every day. It helps us to grow and be who God has called us to be. Spend time in the word and then ask God, the second thing, ask God, what did I just read? Help me to understand this. How can I live this out? That's called prayer. Pray for yourself. Pray for others. That will help you to grow. Third thing, make sure you connect yourself to a church family. It is not intended for you to walk this out by yourself or be on an island. Spiritually speaking, you need a church family. You need to connect with a community of faith like New Beginnings. Amen? If you have a great pastor here, if you're watching online, if you're not in a church, you're not connected to a church, get connected to New Beginning with Pastor Davis. I believe that you can grow and be who God has called you to be. You do those three things, I believe you will be well on your way to being a believer, a child of God. Amen. If you need prayer at this time, we give opportunity uh, for you to do that as well. Amen.
our seeds, amen? So our financial seeds. And our ushers will come and our first impression ministry will come and lead us uh, in the direction. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand and they will bring you one. Be glad to bring you one. Remember, you can give a number of ways. You can give through Zelle. And the email address is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. You can also give through mail. The address is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Again, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. direction of the first impression ministry.
Bible listening and journaling for 2024. We are listening to the New Testament and studying our weekly Sunday school lesson. Tomorrow we start week 17, John 13. Please continue to listen and study God's word. Domestic Mission Trip. Turning Hearts Music Ensemble and the MVP Group are playing a domestic mission trip traveling from Texas to Mississippi and Tennessee on June 6th through 10th, 2024. The trip is open for anyone who wishes to travel with us. Your third payment of $200 is due April 28th. To make donations, please mail turningheartsmusic at gmail.com. Please remember those in our prayer list. Kayla Carter, Child and Brown family, Carla Hornsby, Cora Wood, Jones family, Terry Lewis, Patrice Paskey, Dory Bridgeforth, Brandon Turner, Herman Jewelry, Kenneth Bell, Hobbs family, Nathan Garrett, Chad Warner, Pacheco family, the B family, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Sterman and Garcia family, Flora Kahn, Fatima Bernigo, Beverly Wallace, Aria Parrish Bishop, Mallory Williams, Vivian Asal, Vanessa Anderson, Ed Brennan and family, Jacqueline Torres, Raymond Alpha Jr., Al Brinson, Delonte Miller, Letters to the Harvest and World Peace. Amen. 